So I'm, I'm very excited about this class because there are a lot of things that uh, old and new, and I hope, uh, but you have to have a little patience. Okay, so here we go. We'll start with the famous question, the most famous question in Hanukkah, and that is why is Hanukkah eight days long? Everybody knows that question. It's as old as the holiday itself. If the pure oil which was found was enough for one day, then seemingly the miracle, no miracle occur on the day of Hanukkah. Why is it only seven days? So let's just repeat that question. You should ask your children that question. It's the most famous question of Hanukkah. And that is that we celebrate finding the uh, jug of oil. That was a miracle, of course. Just finding it was a miracle. And they light it. They had enough oil for one day and it lasted for eight days. So the question is, the miracle actually only occurred for seven days. Why do we celebrate Hanukkah for eight days? Everybody got the question? It's a great question. Put it someplace in the back of your head. We're not there yet for the answer. Hi, Grandma Evelyn Soror. How are you, Grandma? Good to see you. Okay, here we go. Uh, there is a practical answer. Before I actually go to the actual answer that I want, just in case somebody wants a quick answer, some people say that divided one night's oil into eight portions. Miraculously, each portion lasted an entire night. Let me explain that. But some people say, no, they didn't take the whole oil and put it in for the first night, you understand? And then had nothing left for the rest. They took the oil that they knew would take eight days. By the way, why did it take eight, eight seven days? Because they were Tameh, till they became Tahor. It takes seven days. And they divided it that it should only last an eighth every night. And the miracle was that it lasted a whole night, the whole day, instead of a little bit. So there's a miracle for eight days. But you know what? That's not that exciting. And um, if we give that answer, I have nothing else to teach for the rest of this class. So we're not going to accept that answer. Okay? But we're going to go very, very deep. And I hope that uh, some, you know, some sideshows with it. Here we go. So I always start with this piece. Hallel is one of the ways that we celebrate Hanukkah. We discussed that last week, I do believe, or two weeks ago, that Hanukkah was a spiritual threat, right? Everybody remember that? It was not a physical threat. The Hellenists, the Yavanim, were willing to let us live. They just wanted us to forget our religion. And therefore, we celebrate Hanukkah by lighting candles, yes, but also by saying Hallel. So Hallel is a, one of the uh, centerpieces of Hanukkah. Good? Good. Hallel is the prayer that we praise Hashem for all the wonderful things that he did, and specifically a miracle that probably is the bigger miracle than Hanukkah. Okay? So if I would say to you, what miracle do we always refer to, always, in our prayer, as one of the biggest miracles that ever happened to Am Yisrael. Anybody want to take a wild guess? Yitziat Mitzrayim. Oh, okay, so Yitziat Mitzrayim, I'm with you, Eleanor. Yitziat Mitzrayim itself, I guess, had, you know, right? Miracles. Yeah, Kriyat Yamsuf. Yeah, I'm going to go for Kriyat Yamsuf. All right, somebody said Kriyat Yamsuf. So there's somebody from my background on this. I'm, I'm very happy about that. <laughs> yes. The Yom Kippur War. Oh, who said that? Rochelle Balak. Oh, Rochelle, excellent. Yes. Okay, so we're not talking right now in modern history. We're talking about in ancient history. Okay, <laughs> oh, no. that was good. Yeah. Actually, actually, uh, it was more, I would even say the Six Day War was a bigger miracle than the Yom Kippur War. No? If somebody that's wants what to... I meant. That's oh, what, that's I what meant. you meant. Okay, I'm glad. I'm glad. All right, excellent. So, Mrs. Chazel, you want to say something? Yes. Yeah. The parting of the sea. The parting of the sea, correct. Right. Kriyat Yamsuf. Okay. It's a, we refer to that a lot, by the way, a lot in our prayers. By the way, if you, um, for, for those of us who are familiar with the prayers leading to the Amidah in the morning, right? We talk about that, you know, all the Yamsuf at night. Okay. So in Hallel, we are referring to it. The Tzayt Yisrael Mitzrayim, like you said, Eleanor, Beit Yaakov Miam Loez. This, by the way, is the second paragraph of Hallel. And it refers to us leaving Mitzrayim. Very nice. And now we're ready to talk about the biggest miracle ever. Hayam, yay, the sea, Ra'a, the sea saw something, Vayanos, and it split. Those three words is referring to probably the biggest miracle in Jewish history. The sea saw something, Ra'a, 
Vayanos, and it ran, and it split. It's funny, by the way, that, you know, in American um, uh, slang, right? I don't know if they still say that. When I was a kid, they said that. If you want to, like, leave, what do you say? Split. I'm splitting. You never, never ever heard that? Yeah, of course. Oh, I'm splitting. Isn't that funny? So they took a split. Vayanos really means run away. And here, the uh, David Melech is saying it's split. Maybe that's how we got it from David Melech. That's how we got that slang. Okay. So for those of us who remember old, 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 old classes, the sea saw something and ran. Okay, so what did the sea see? Rita, you know the answer to that question. You want to tell us? I smote Yosef. Oh, hey! Where'd you go to high school? Rita, where'd you go to high school? Oh, she even flappers. I heard she even flappers. Yeah, okay, okay, okay. Uh, guys, this is a, uh, a parlor meeting for Yeshiva Flavish. You, you zoomed on to the wrong Zoom. I, I, all right, here we go. Yes, it's so, so the Mishnah, the Midrash says, the Midrash says, I'm going to go to the middle of the Midrash. One one was responded, Ra'a Arono Shel Yosef. It saw the casket of Yosef entering the sea. You got it? Amar HaKadosh Baruch Hu Yanus Mipi Hanes. Which means, what did the sea, Yamsuf, see, S E E, before it split? It saw the coffin of Yosef. Okay, that at face value needs tremendous explanation. First of all, what does that mean, the coffin of Yosef? Everybody should know. I'm sure you remember. Yosef made his children promise that when they leave Mitzrayim, they're going to what? Take out his casket with them. And they did, and they took it with them for 40 years in the Midbar, and it came all the way to Eretz Israel. A little update, there is some place called Kever Yosef today. I'm sorry to bring up a, a sad story. Does anybody remember who lives in the Bet Torah area? Does anybody remember Rabbi Lieberman's son? That story about Rabbi Lieberman's son. That yes. He, he rests in peace. If you remember Rabbi Lieberman's son, was unfortunately killed when he tried to go back to Kevin Yosef to save the Sifre Torah. Anybody remember that? Yes. Actually, Rabbi I do. Uh, yes. Yeah, yeah. So that's the Kevin Yosef that we're talking about. So they brought it all the way back to Eretz Israel. It's okay. Rabbi Lieberman's your site this week, Rabbi. Oh, wow. So I'm glad I mentioned it. To be now the Wow. I'm glad I mentioned it. So try to have the image. They're carrying the 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 coffin of Yosef the sea did not split well the sea did not split until he saw the casket of Yosef okay first of all how do they know that how do they know that so you're going to tell me how do you know anything but they prove it how do they prove it let's do that first because we are a logical class right ladies we do everything and prove it Ellen is saying yes because otherwise she wouldn't join my class so it says, Hayam ra'ah vayanos. You see that word, yanos? That he learned split, it means ran? Wow, that word is found in a very famous story of Yosef. And that's the story that I refer to all the time. It's going to be the bedrock of our class today. Love the story. A little, uh, you know, we, we're all adults, so we can talk about the story. Yosef was sold to Egypt. He was sold to a man called Potiphar, last week's Parsha. Potiphar loved him, made him his head. And of course, Mrs. Potiphar felt that Yosef was a very, 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 very attractive young man. And she tried to seduce him. And the Torah tells us, Fahika Yomazeh was on that day. He came home. We'll talk about that soon. And she grabs Yosef's coat and he, she says, Be with me. He dropped the coats. You see it? Vayanas, Vayanos. There it is. Vayanos. And the next pasuk repeats it for no good reason. So it says it twice. So that means there's a big deal about Vayanas. That word Vayanas is used right here. And therefore the Medrash learns that it is referring to the Aaron of Yosef. 
Everybody got the fact so far. Everybody agrees that it makes no sense. Raise your hand. Makes no sense. That just because it says Vayanas there, and it says Vayanas there, I got it. But what's the logic behind it? Ready? Not hard. The sea had a challenge. The sea has a job. God created the sea to be the sea. Uh -huh, there it is. That's its job. Not to split, not to separate, but to be a body of water. So I'll be nature, I'll be teva. The job of the sea is to be where it is. All of a sudden, the Jewish people are asking the sea to do something not natural, right? Against the teva. You guys with me? To do a miracle. Why would it do that? Where does it come from? So God said, look at the coffin of Yosef. Yosef was successful in doing something unnatural. We don't have to go into details, guys. But for Yosef to be able to succeed in controlling and doing the right thing and doing the right values, that is like a miracle. It's like a miracle. It's an amazing concept. And therefore, in the merit, you guys with me? In the merit of Yosef Vayanas, God commanded the sea, you have to respect Yosef and the Jewish people, and you do something unnatural, and the sea split. Does everybody understand that? I got a couple of nods, because that's a little difficult. So that's what the Medrash means, and backed up with the Basuk Vayanas. Good? So what do we see? That this miracle, the concept of miracle, is to do something against the teva, against nature, which means beyond nature. Sideshow that I mentioned last night, I want to show you how beautiful, how many days is Hanukkah? Girls, this is the easiest question today. How many days is Hanukkah? Eight. Hey. Good. Oh, by the way, I have to tell you, I asked the kids in school, my, my class, I had a Hanukkah quiz. How many days? It was a trick question. How many days is Hanukkah in Israel? Half of them answered seven. Because <laughs> they think all the holidays are one day less in Israel. It was just so cute. So, of course, they, you know, they failed the test, but it was cute. Okay, here we go. <laughs> so, yeah, eight days. Why eight days? And Hanukkah, of course, is the miracle holiday. Because seven... is natural. Nature, right. Excellent, Erica, right. Why? Because Hashem created the world in seven days. Eight, you guys with me? Eight is Lemala Mina Teva. Is higher than is, is higher than Teva. It's the miracle. It's the ability. Brit Mila, eight days, higher than Teva. The Jewish people have a, a greater koach than Teva. Okay, we got that done. So very nice. So we understand the Midrash. We understand why it's split. Everybody agrees? What makes me so impressed, and now you know where I'm going, I'm going to very familiar territory, because I think every four uh, lessons, every four classes, I go back to this story. I love this story. What do I see? So if somebody would ask you, give me an unbelievable character trait, or what makes a great rabbi a great rabbi? So you would say to me, top story? I don't know. He knows how to learn so beautifully. He's an amazing Baal Chesed. What do we just see? What is the top story of Yosef HaTzadik? The top. The one that Hayam Ra'ab Ayanos, his ability to control his Yetzirah. His ability to stick to his values. His ability to overcome a challenge in the face of daily life is the top thing that we refer to. Unbelievable, right? I think it's amazing that that's the story that Hashem lords about Yosef. So now here we go. Ready? Where did he get that ability from? How did that happen? You know where I'm going, ladies. You know exactly the pasuk, but we're going to learn some new twists in it. Here we go. So the, the Torah tells Can you tell me before I turn the page? Where did he get it from? Probably Rachel. Oh, Rachel, that's nice. I like that. Anybody remember? His father. Oh. His father. What happened? You guys remember? 
He saw his father's face. Who said that? Who said that? Gloria. Here we go. Gloria, there used to be a song, Gloria. Remember? Gloria, <laughs> Gloria. Okay, here we go. Yes. Okay. So Rashi brings a famous Medrash. He came home, Lasot Melachto. This is a tough Rashi. It says that Yosef came home. Rav and Shmuel. He came home to do his work. Chadamar Melachto Mamash once says he came to do his work. He came home. She was home alone. It was a very big holiday. Mrs. Potifar was home alone. Chadamar, and the second rabbi said, Lasot Srachav Ima. I got to look at you for that. According to the second Medrash, Yosef's resistance was broken. She finally got to him. You have to understand, the guy is alone. He's 18 years old. He's, you know, his, his family abandoned him. Why should he have values? And he was finally almost there. He came home to be with her, says Rashi. You guys know this Rashi. It's a very famous Rashi. Ella shenirat lo dimut yokno shalaviv. But what happened? His father's image appeared. So what put Yosef able to be successful in this moment? And again, I, I, I have to keep saying this story because I'm so impressed that God is putting forth a regular day challenge. Do you understand? A regular challenge that all of us sometimes might have. It doesn't have to be in that area of desire. It could be other desires. It could be being honest in business. It could be all kinds, any Torah value. That the ability to overcome the tremendous challenge is, is the most important thing. But he was able to do it because before he fell into the trap, the image of his father came. Okay. What does that mean? What does that mean, guys? All of a sudden, there was a screen and his father's face came. You guys know what I always say when I come to this story. Is this Lion King? Mus Musafta came in the middle of the night and said, Yosef! I mean, come on. We're old enough to learn this message. What does that mean that his father's image? So there are two ways. Are you ready? The first and second way both deal with Hanukkah. And you know what? Since it's Hanukkah, you're not leaving the Zoom till I do both. Here we go. I'm very forward. What is his father's image? So I want to take you into a little trip. I hope you like this trip because I love this trip. In Parshat Vayishlach, after Yaakov successfully ended his meeting with Esav, successful, done. Vayeshev Vayovahu Esav Ledarko, Esav leaves. The Yaakov Nasa Sukota. Yaakov goes to Sukot. That's the name of the place. Vayivin Lobayit, he builds a house. Nice, real estate guy. And for his cattle, he made booths. What just happened here? I'm sorry. He came to a place. Place did not have a name. He built a hut for his animals. And therefore, we call the place Sukkot. Okay, really? First of all, who cares what he did for his animals? Why is that so important? Remember, every time the Torah gives us a detail, there's a reason. Second of all, there's no name for this place, and you call the place Sukkot because he built a Sukkot for his animal? Is everybody as bewildered as I am? Go like this. Very nice. Okay. Reedy, where'd you go? The deal? Oh, he's so long in the car. Got it. Everybody got the question. And then it gets worse. It gets much worse. Says the Gemara. Sukkot is associated with our patriarch Yaakov. The holiday of Sukkot, guys, is connected to Yaakov. Because the Torah records that after Yaakov met his brother Esau, after they parted in peace, Yaakov journeyed to Sukkot, built himself a house, and for his livestock he made shelter. Therefore, we call the name of the place Sukkot. And therefore, we have the holiday of Sukkot connected to Yaakov. This is getting worse by the minute. The holiday of Sukkot is connected to Yaakov because he built the Sukkah for his little sheepies? What's going on? So there's a beautiful perush, beautiful perush, called the Orachayim. Orachayim supposedly, I understand, learned that learned the parsha with his daughters. They 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 say. Listen what he says. The reason this place was called Sukkot was because there Yaakov built pens and shelters. Right. The Torah purposely does not say the Sukkot because they were like, right, 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 right. 
You might well ask it. Why did Torah bother to mention the fact? Uh, ask our Chayim our question that Yaakov called the name the place where he built shelters for his animals. Here we go. Perhaps the reason is that Yaakov was the first human being who expended so much time, energy, and money in order to assure his animals a degree of comfort, both in summer and winter. Let's do this again. Yaakov, the Torah, remember, anytime Hashem is writing something, there's a reason. And if Yaakov is doing something, ladies and gentlemen, there's a reason. Get ready for the most important reason as a Jewish person. Yaakov cared about his animals. Why? What's he teaching, guys? What's he teaching? What's the lesson? He's a person who loves animals? Could be. Could be. That's the lesson? So we're all supposed to love animals. Cookie, are you on the on the Zoom? Oh, cook? No, okay. So that means that we are going out and buying a dog for the best of your family. Because that's what Yaakov Avinu, she's not on the Zoom, so I can say it now, right? Uh-oh. Okay, yes. So the Besser family is about to buy a dog based on this class, correct? Let, I want to- oh, I knew it, I knew it, I knew it, she's come back. I knew We're it. not. Cookie, we just learned that Yaakov said to be nice to animals. We'll visit a zoo, that will be the- call. Oh, okay, we'll visit a zoo. Okay, very good. Oh, so that can't be, that can't be, because if Yaakov is teaching us that everybody gets a dog, then Sefreda would have gotten the dog, because Sefreda is a very religious woman. That's not what he's teaching us. What is he teaching us? He's teaching us something very important, and that's why the Torah writes it. Okay. Compassion. Oh, who said compassion? Me, Rochelle. I love you, Rochelle. Great, but that's not what he's teaching us either, <laughs> because <laughs> compassion you can be. You can show compassion to people. Why all of a sudden does he bring animals to show compassion? Because they 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 don't have any way to thank you. It's like a chesed shalemis. Oh, that's nice. You're really going in that area. But that's not where I'm going. I hear that. Maybe we should kill the dog, and there'll be a real chesed shalemis. No, at the same time. But I don't think so. But that's a nice thought, which means be compassionate to people who can't give back. Could be. I'd like to offer the following. Are you ready? Here we go. Why? What made Yaakov a successful business person? Hashem, I know. But what in, through which medium did Yaakov become successful financially? Sheep. Sheep. That was his fortune. Sheep made him rich. And therefore, if the sheep made him rich, he felt that he owes something to the sheep. You got it? And therefore, he went out of his way to make them comfortable. What do we call that value, ladies? Hakarat Hatov. Hakarat Hatov is what Yaakov is teaching. Yaakov is saying, when it comes to Hakarat Hatov, it doesn't have to be a live person. Mr. Chazov, let me add something that I didn't say. Who remembers in Sefer Shemot who implemented the first three makot in Mitzrayim. Who was it? Aaron. Aaron. Why didn't Moshe hit the water? What is the answer? Because the water because was the water good to him. The water saved him. Tell me, how many people have ever had a conversation with water and the water was insulted? Please raise your hand. If you did, please go see a therapist right after this class. You got it? Water has no feelings. Water is inanimate. Yet... There's a concept. God is teaching us. Moshe is teaching us. The water saved you. Be nice to the water. You got it? The sheep made him rich. Show gratitude to the sheep. That's what it is. Is that beautiful? Mm -hmm. Hakarat HaTov is teaching us. And now I understand fully, fully, ladies, why Yaakov is connected to the holiday of Sukkot. Why? What is the name of the holiday of Sukkot in the Torah other than Sukkot? Like Chag Hawat. Ha'asif. Ha'asif. Le'esof means it's the time that we gather in gather. all of the crops. Okay. It's the time that we see how much we have. What feeling should a person have during Chag Asif? What's the answer? 
Gratitude to Hashem Makaratatov, excellent. And that is why, by the way, a quick, and it's not a side point. Oh, there's Hakaratatov. There it is. I'll skip this part. That's why Sukkot is called Ziman. Let's go. Sim Cha Te Nu. Because answer the question your child is going to say, Mommy, Daddy, what makes a person happy? Happy. What's the answer to that question? What makes a person happy? How do you answer that question? He who is happy with his lot. What? Happy with? His lot. His happy Gratitude. With his lot. What does that mean? A person <laughs> grateful <laughs> for what he has. He's makir the tov. He recognizes the good that they have in their life. And they thank whoever is giving them what they have. That is a person who's happy. Correct? Sameach b'chelko. Sameach b'chelko. Excellent. Excellent, Sally. Right. And therefore, Sukkot is the holiday of Sameach b'chelko. Sukkot is the holiday of what? Of Hakarat HaTov. And therefore, Yaakov is the man who established Sukkot. Everybody got the picture? Mm -hmm. Excellent. This next piece is sort of new. I'm going to back up this theory. And if you've never seen it, it's going to flip your lid. So you know that Yosef was sent by Yaakov to see the brothers, right? To see how they're doing. Let me stop share for a second. And you know that that was the last time that Yaakov and Yosef saw each other for all oh, close to 22 years. Correct? Correct? Right? Yeah. Okay. Look at this conversation. I don't know if you haven't noticed it. It's really cool. By Yomer Lo, Yaakov says to Yosef, Lechna re'e, go check out at Shalom Achecha. Go see how your brothers are doing. Are you ready for the next three words? The et Shalom Hatzon. The et Shalom Hatzon. Yaakov tells Yosef, I need you to go visit two, two groups. First, see how your bros are doing. And check out if the sheep are being taken care of. There it is. Shlom matzon. And come back and tell me. So the last message that Yaakov, the last conversation, guys, I'm very excited about this. The last conversation, Yaakov tells Yosef, check out your brothers and make sure the sheep are taken care of. So what's in Yosef's head? Which concept? What did Yosef see his whole life with his father? And by the way, talk is cheap. Talk is cheap. He built Sukkot. That means it cost him money. He cared about it. He did something about it. Sold? Here we go. Yeah. Says the Torah. Let's go. Okay, that's the well. That's what I just said. Let's go to the beginning of the story of um, Potiphar's wife and Yosef. And it was after these things. This is the beginning of the story. Potiphar's wife lifts her eyes to Yosef and she says, Come be with me. And he refuses. And he refuses according to, okay, and there are two reasons I'm going to tell you. I might as well tell it now, okay? You don't see it very well. I don't know if you can really see it on the screen. So this is going to answer another part of our class. On top of the Yema'en, there is a note, a connotation, which means when we read the Torah, there are little sound notes. It's called trop in Yiddish that are on top of a word. And did you notice there is a line right there? You see that line? You guys see it? Can you see it your, on your screen? Yeah. No. Yeah. See a line after Yema'en? A line? It's a squiggly line. No, right here. No, no, no. It's squiggly on top of the olive. But yeah, on top right of the after, olive. Right after. You see? Oh, a, like a separation. A separation. Oh. Right. Which means it doesn't flow. Look at all the other so came. Look. All of a sudden, it says, So the word is its own entity. Do you understand? You see it? I hope you see it. Uh, and means he refused. So these two little signs mean something. 
Okay, everybody should know. What do we call that squiggly? Any Ashkenaz person here? What do we call that squiggly on or even this Fadim should notice? What do we call it? A what? Shal Shalet. What's the word Shal Shalet come from? The chain. Three. Three. We're going to get the chain soon. That's later. So it's a Shal Shalet. Okay, I'm not going to do this. I've done this once in the class before. Does any girl know how to read the Torah? Oh. Yes. Okay, Eve. Yes. Okay, so I, I don't know if I'm allowed to let you sing, but you're going to do it anyway. Uh, do you know how to say a Shal Shalet? It goes on for a long time. Oh, what a di- what a diplomatic girl I, I produced from Yeshiva <laughs> Flatbush. Look at that. Evie, I'm very proud of you. Yes. It goes <laughs> on for a long time. And actually, it goes like this. It goes in and out, in and out, in and out. Three times. You got it? Okay. So the rabbis are telling us, anytime it gives us a shalshelet, it means that the person was struggling with the decision. I'll give you another one. I didn't say this last night either. I'll give you another one. When Lot was running away from Sodom, actually he wasn't running away, he was told, leave Sodom. It says, Vayit Mama. It says, Ashal Shelet. He was, he was thinking about it. Why was he thinking about it? What was he leaving back in Sodom? He didn't know. It was, what was he leaving? His riches. His riches. He was leaving his money, and they kept telling him, get out of here, get out of here, get out of here. So he kept going, I don't know, yeah, no, yeah, no, yeah, no. That's how the Shal works. And it's its own entity, which means Yosef, you like this line business? He was alone at that point. It was his thoughts. It was him, him alone, in his own head. He was struggling. What does he tell the wife of Potiphar? Vayomer el Eshet Adonav, and he tells his master's wife, "Hey, Adoni lo yada iti mababait. Your master, your husband, let me do whatever I want. He put me in charge. V'chol asha yesh lo natam yadi. Put into my hands. And then he gadol mababait azeb yotemri many. There's no one greater than me in this in this in this house." He didn't give me. He, he did not give me anything. Kimotach, except for you. How can I commit this great evil? And and it's against God. <laughs> so listen, he's got this whole speech, and it's against God. It's at the end of the speech. You know what that means? That means the against God was not enough to stop him because his Yetzahara was getting the better of him and understood it, understood. We're human. It happens. The speech before, your husband's nice to me. He gave me everything. How can I do this to him? Girls and boys, tell me, what is he saying? What's the underlying theme there? That he has to be great. You got it. How can I do this to your husband who's so nice to me? So the answer is, it wasn't Mustafa coming down. It wasn't a painting of Yaakov coming down. It was what Yaakov ingrained in this boy's head. He ingrained Hakara Satov. And when he got that feeling of Hakara Satov, that succeeded in him succeeding and not falling in his values. How beautiful is that? That's the key. That's the key. uh, Isn't it also that he saw like a father image? Yes, himself because he looked like his father. Correct, but but what I want to explain here is that the image here is not necessarily the image. He, what he saw was what he saw his father's image, but family values, the lesson that his father ingrained in him. You know, I always use if Sefred is on, she'll she'll confirm it. I, I usually use this example: when you grew up with Sefred, his father you'll know never to waste food. Trust me. <laughs> Trust me. Cookie, you there? I know she's there. You know what I'm talking about? When you grow up with people who came through the war, if you don't finish your cereal, you're feeling guilty already now. You're already feeling the guilt. But, well. <laughs> no, but you sense what I'm trying to say? That's what it means. When you start doing something that your parents were so much against, right? And it's so ingrained, all of a sudden you see or the feel, you sense the image of the parents. Destroyed Kinderstube. Oh, wow. Wow. Now you, you just brought that to a whole other level in Yiddish. That's amazing. Kinderstube. Uh, that's, Stube is the house. Destroyed Kinderstube, yeah. Oh, my God. Oh, somebody from my background. I love it. Cookie, we were just talking about that. 
Anytime we're going to throw out food, whose image comes into your head? My father's. Ah, bingo! You see? Guys, we should go on the newlyweds. Safran and I should go on the newlyweds. <laughs> we know all the right answers before. But isn't that true, Cookie? Isn't that the same example? Never would ever throw out anything. Anything! Ever. Because, because we, we, did you not see your father's face when you do that? Yeah. Absolutely. So that's what it means. That's what it means. Oh. So now I understand how beautiful that is. And therefore, let's do this full circle, full circle. Are you ready? What is the most important part of celebrating Hanukkah? Kavu shmonat yemei Hanukkah elu lehodot ulahalel leshimcha hagadol. To thank Hashem and to express gratitude. That is why al Nisim is in the part in the Shemona Esrei of Modim Anachulach. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Got it? Now, let's go back to our first question. First question is, why is Hanukkah eight days? It's the first day they had enough oil. You know what the tremendous potential danger of celebrating miracles is that we only celebrate miracles. We wait for the big thing, which means if I wake up and I see Rabbi Besser flying through the sky. At this point, it would be a really dangerous large object flying through the sky. <laughs> but if I see Rabbi Besser flying through the sky, you're going to say, wow! Not one of you looking at me now are saying wow. But you should say wow. I'm able to breathe. I'm able to see you. I'm able to talk, I'm able to think, but no one thinks of that as a miracle. Nobody's saying, wow. So the rabbis are telling us, before you start celebrating eight days, the first day is to celebrate the fact that oil burns. That's a miracle. Don't take it for granted. Don't take anything for granted. The fact that we breathe is a miracle. And then you have seven days of oil Extra miracles. That's the answer. Because that's the key of Hanukkah. The key of Hanukkah is Hakarat Tatov, based on that story. Sold? Sold. Very nice point. Oh, thank you, Cookie. Okay, Sefreda said it's back. Isn't that that we could use actually the oil, but the Rabbonim made it and it has to be pure? Uh, we could use, say it again one more time. The, uh, that the oil could be used, even if it was touched, but the Rabbanim... Api halacha, but they said they want to do it. It has to be a mitzvah. Correct, correct. Okay, so I want to quickly share, because I have a lot of things I want to do, but I am going to do this, even though I did it once before quickly, and since the freight is on, I want to do this. Can I show you how important it's very quick? How important is Hakarat Tatov? It's so important that people misunderstand the first sin that happened, the first sin that happened in Eitz Adat. Right? We think that the sin of Eitz Adat was that Adam Arishon ate from the Eitz Adat. No. Hashem says to Adam, did you eat from the Eitz Adat? What's Adam's answer? Ha'isha asher natata imadi hinat nali That was his first answer. You know why I ate from the Eitz Adat? It's my wife's fault. <laughs> you gave me the wife, she messed up my life. Says Rabbi Friend, Adam was exiled from the Garden of Eden primarily because of the sin of ingratitude. His response to God's question, have you eaten from the tree of which I commanded you to eat? Demonstrated, right? Ingratitude for having a companion. Adam's response was, the women who gave to be with, with me, ungratefully, uh, to be with, uh, he, ungratefully was, I don't know what happened, asserts that Adam confessed his sin without being an ingrate. God would probably have allowed him to remain in the Garden of Eden. Guys, I got to explain this. This is a depth of unbelievable depth. That was a double word. Rabbi Fran says that if Adam Arishon would have just said, yes, I ate from the eight Hadad, but he sinned. He did a sin. God would have said, forgiven. Forgiven. Okay. You're a human. You slip. I got it. But you were ungrateful? Your answer was, you blame the wife that I gave you? I gave you a wife as a gift. You don't appreciate what I do? You're not hakarat tov? That's unforgivable. So the most important midah is hakarat tov. And if you think about it, who is the first Jew of the Jewish nation? 
Abraham. Who taught? What yeshiva did Abraham go to? His own. <laughs> he was a fundraiser and he built his own thing and he also made decisions about pandemic and corona? Wow, how did he do all that? <laughs> I don't know. Shame forever. Uh, oh, no, no, no. One second, one second, one second, one second. Shame forever. Where did Abraham come to believing in a God? Do you know what brought him to believing in a God? Hakarat Hatov. Who put me here? Who gave me this power? How did I get here? What is one of the most important mitzvot in Judaism? Is kibud avaem. Why? How do you not appreciate someone who gave you life? That's what it's all about. The biggest midah is hakarat hatov. And it's unforgivable if we don't. And that's what Hanukkah is about. And that's why the first part of Hanukkah is a karata tough. Okay. I only have 10 minutes, but I can't ignore the other perush in this pasuk, which I did this summer. But I'm going to do it quick and connect it to, to, um, to, um, to Hanukkah. Here we go. Second Hanukkah message. So first of all, quick. Let's do some technical work. What does Hanukkah actually mean? So has anybody ever been invited or participated in something called Chanukat Habayit? Mm-hmm. Okay, what does that mean, Chanukat Habayit? Celebration of a new house. Inauguration. Right. And a dedication. Right, dedication, right, and inaugurating a new house. So Chanukah is called Chanukah because what happened, guys? Because, let me get this off the screen, because the, Mac, the uh, Yevanim, totally defiled the Beit HaMikdash. The Chashmonaim came back, right? And, and what did they do? And they, uh, and they re, I mean, they didn't rebuild it, but they fixed it up. So they rededicated, right? They re-inaugurated the Beit HaMikdash, the Mizbeach, the, the place, and therefore it's called Chanukah. Hope you knew that. That's really the main reason why this holiday is called Chanukah. However, there are many other reasons. Right? We also know that the word Chanukah is related to the word what? The Greeks issued decrees against Jewish education, right? Remember, they wanted to kill us spiritually and forbade circumcision. The mitzvah that begins a Jewish boy's education. On Chanukah, we celebrate our freedom to provide our children with a proper Jewish education. Chanukah is about educating our kids. That's why having all these little games on Hanukkah and all these things on Hanukkah and these songs on Hanukkah are very important. I got to tell you something amazing that I heard from YY, Rabbi Y.Y. Jacobson. The Lubavitcher Rebbe stressed the unique connection between Hanukkah and education. <clears throat> Hanukkah is a special time to inspire children to connect to their heritage, as can be seen by the many Hanukkah customs that specifically involve children, like the giving of Hanukkah gel. Gel. Okay. Uh, I'd like a Sephardic girl here to tell me what does gelt mean? Money. Oh, very good. See, that you know. That you know. All of a sudden, the one <laughs> word in English that everybody knows is money. I love it. Okay. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Yes. Y.Y. Jacobson, I just heard this uh, a week ago, two weeks ago. I was very excited about it. Listen carefully. So we have a custom. We is all of us that we give out Hanukkah money. Does anybody know about that custom? I hope you know that. We give out Hanukkah gelt. That's so not Torah day, right? It's like, really? Money? Can you imagine if your kids come over to you and say, "Can I?" by the way, money is the original thing. Gifts comes from Christmas, but we'll talk about that some other time. But it's, it's money that was given in the old country. Money. Doesn't that sound a little gross? Says Rabbi Jacobson. This is brand new. Listen up. I love it. Money itself has no value. You give a kid a $5 bill. Okay, he'll throw it back in your face. You give a kid a $20 bill. Okay, yeah. You give a kid a $20 bill and he looks at it and plays with it and puts it in his thing and doesn't put it to any use. It's pointless. That's not a gift. The gift is take what I give you and do something with it. How beautiful is that lesson? Says Rabbi Jacobson. That's the Chinuch on Hanukkah. Tell your children, God gave you gifts. You're sitting and playing with them? God gave you brains, you're doing nothing with your brains? God gave you musical talent, you're doing nothing with that talent? That's not. So chinuch is, show them, here's a dollar. 
What are you going to do with this dollar? Come back and tell me. How beautiful is that? Right. That's beautiful. I know. It's not mine. Rabbi Y.Y. Jacobson. Fine. So let's do this quick because I want to do uh, one other thing after that. Okay. Chinuch. So Chinuch is so important. Okay. So let's go back to our story. Our story about the image. Guys, I want to do this fast, but it's so beautiful. Another perush besides the one that I said about Hakarat Tatov. Something so important in Chinuch and on Chanukah. In order to understand it, we're going to go back all the way to the moment that Yaakov was told that Yosef died. By Yaakov Siblotav, by the way, it's amazing. You have a reference in the Torah early on that when somebody hears bad news of somebody dying, they have to tear their clothing. I think it's just amazing. The same thing we do today. Okay, whatever. By Yasam Sakhmimatnav, and he puts sackcloth, and he is the morning. He's sitting shiva. And all his sons and all his daughters arose to console him. Okay, quick. I, I, I am going to go over time, but I'll just do this. First of all, sideshow very quickly. I don't know if you remember this. Rabbi Jacobson again asks a very, I don't know if you guys caught this as I say it, by the way. How many times did I learn this parsha in my life? I never saw this or thought about this till Rabbi Jacobson said so. Okay, all his sons and all of his daughters came to console him. Oh, they never daughter. mentioned he had daughters. Before. He didn't have daughters. Where does he have daughters? Where are the daughters coming from? So, so some learned that actually daughters in law. Some learned that he actually had daughters, that each one, there was a girl born in each one. So Jacobson said, if you didn't tell us till now, why are you telling me this now? Why all of a sudden this is important? So Rabbi Jacobson said that you know what his daughters, you know what they're saying? I, I, I'm sorry to talk like this, but I think you can hear this. You have to understand, they had no lost love for Yosef. You know that, right? We can discuss this next week. No lost love. They also saw Yosef as an outliner. He's an outsider. Played with his hair. He had dreams. Guy's on drugs. I don't know what this guy is. He's, he's not the cookie cutter, right? He's not going to Lakewood. He's not going to learn for six years. He's not the cookie cutter. He's not the regular kid who's going to go to Harvard, Yale, and I don't know where they're going. So he's gone. So they all got up. Watch. They all brought... Look, Zaini, look, look at your grandchildren. Look at all your daughters in law. You got four in Muncie, five here, and the two in Israel. They're doing this. He's a businessman. Look, so you lost one. You lost one. Hey, look, it was success. Not everybody succeeds in every kid. It happens. So one's not good. That's what they were telling him. Do you understand? That's how Jacobson learns it. That's why it says he brought the whole family. And of course, not, Yos- not Yaakov. Vayimma'en. Okay, you know what I'm about to say. Vayimma'en. He refused, refused the same word. He refused. By the way, oh, I have so much to say now. I'm trying to rush a little sideshow. It's so amazing. The Gemara says that forgetfulness is a blessing from God. Cookie, see? I'm so blessed, sweetheart. Forgetfulness is a blessing from God. Because if we wouldn't have forgetfulness, God forbid, we would never be able to, you know, to get past, God forbid, some of Forget. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Forgetfulness is a blessing. But that we wouldn't blessing, be able to have more kids, Rabbi. Correct. Very good. Oh, <laughs> Carrie. Hey, Carrie. Excellent. If I remembered every labor... Gary. <laughs> I would have stopped at Michael, Rabbi. Oh, I love it, Gary. That's great. That is great. Okay. Oh, that's so cute. You know, they tell the old joke. Okay, guys, we're definitely going over time. You know, they tell the old joke that, that the, the husband, for the first time, goes in, and he's in the room with his wife, and he's, like, sweating, and he's, like, crazy, right? And then finally, finally, a girl comes out, right? A baby girl. He turns to his new daughter. He goes, shoo, thank God you're a girl. You have to go through what I just went through. Oh, my gosh. Thank God. Yeah, <laughs> I got that. That was excellent, Carrie. I didn't even think of that. That was great. Uh, okay. But you know what's weird here? Yosef never died. Got it? They told him that he died. So that means he was never dead. That means that Yaakov never got the blessing of forgetfulness. That's how they learned this, people. Some people say that for 22 years, Rahman is Hazir on Yaakov, he sat like it was that day. Okay, sideshow. Vayimaen, he refuses. Okay, uh, for those of you who might remember or don't remember, can you maybe figure out what, what other word is in that word, Vayimaen? It means refuse. What other word could be there? Any other Shoresh? 
Okay, how about if I give it to you? It's called emuna. What does emuna mean? Faith. Faith. Who did he have faith in? Hashem. Hashem. Yes. But in this case, who did he have faith in? Yosef. 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 Which means he refused to accept that they are saying he's not a good kid. No, 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 says Yaakov. Don't tell me about that, Yosef. Yosef was a boy with many qualities. He was a great boy. So he wasn't a cookie cutter. So he did his hair that way. So he was a little bit of a hippie. He was a little bit different than everybody else. But I have faith or had or have faith. And that same word, girls and boys, that same word, by your man appears in what we were last time. What was the word that stopped him from going? Where to go? 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 Oh, come on, Tully. Here it is. I am I am the same word, the same word. And that is what people learn. Some people learn that when it says that his father's image, watch this, this is amazing. Not his father's image, meaning he saw his father, you know, like we said before, but he felt the faith that his father had in him. That's what kept him going. And you're going to tell me, how do I know that? Now, I, 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 it's almost two, but guys, I want you to look very carefully because this is an amazing thing. You have to go very careful and know you're a diduk. Let, let's go back to the same. So the English says he saw his father's image, image, right? That's the English. Guys, please make sure you understand this. I'll say it twice. But if you look at the Hebrew, that's not what it says. The word diyoken is image. What's diyok no? His no, come on. His. What's diyok no? His image. His uh, image. His own image. Oh! So look, it doesn't say he saw the image of his father. Then it would say, Dmut Diyoken Shel Aviv. You don't need Diokno. Diokno means his own image. You know what that means, guys? I'm so excited. He saw what his father saw in him. Oh, how beautiful Ooh. is that? How gorgeous is that? He felt... The vision that his father had in him. And that's what was able to save him from not doing a sin. Does everybody understand that last part? Because it's really cool. So that's I'm sorry? It's powerful. It is powerful. So that's the chidush. So we have. Now, therefore, I'd like to say before I end, I have just one more thing I want to say. And that is... That's the second message of Hanukkah, in my humble opinion, guys. It's the second message of Hanukkah. Because what is the most important part of Chinuch? The, come on, any teacher here and any parent knows, is it the material? No. What's the most important? The teacher and the parent have to believe in the child. If the, if the child doesn't feel that the people teaching them believe in them, they won't succeed. Come on, you agree with me. Someone has to feel that they believe. You know all the stories. I'm not going to go through all the stories. We have a lot of stories. Every child will tell you that the, the moment they started to succeed is when they felt that somebody felt that they could do it. And they know when somebody's behind them, that's the second message. And both messages, how beautiful is this, guys? That both messages fall out on the Shabbat, Shabbos last week of Shabbos Hanukkah, which we read that story. Both from that story. Both the story of Akarat Tov, which is Hanukkah, and that. How nice is that? We're good? I want to end with not my piece. I'm not going to show it to you because I was going to show you the video, but you know, it's late. Let me just give you the concept. Charlie Harari has a great video. He asked a simple question. There were two major miracles. Major. No, I'm sorry. There was a major miracle and a minor miracle during Hanukkah. The minor miracle, ladies, is the oil. Okay, I'm not saying it was a miracle, right? It was a miracle. It was oil that only lasted for one day, lasted for eight days. Okay. How about... 10 little old Hasidic Jews taking on the entire Greek army and beating them. How about that? I mean, the, 
the, mil the military, Mati Diao was not a young man at that time. How many people were there? This was a huge military, military, uh, war, uh, you know, uh, uh, victory and it was a miracle. So we mention it in Awanisim. True, true, we do. We say, right, Rabbi Biyad Matim. But ladies and gentlemen, where is the symbolism? Where is the symbolism? The only symbol we have is oil. And it's so all over the place. It's the mitzvah of lighting the oil, right? Of Hanukkah, eating the latkes, all of that, sesame, uh, the donuts, all of that is coming from the oil. The truth is, if the Maccabee would have eaten what I ate this, this uh, past Hanukkah, they would not have won the war. I can tell you that much. For sure not. So why is it all focused on the oil? It's a great question, by the way. Charlie's question is a great question. You know what he answers? It's the last thing. It's Charlie's. It's not mine. Jews don't fight with swords. We fight with light. Of course, we defend ourselves. We have an IDF. You defend yourself. If you're attacked, you do defend yourself. But we don't celebrate military victories. No. We celebrate that we're better than our enemies. They want to kill us. I mean, I see Susan here. Uh, so I want to tell you what we say on the Chesed mission. The goal of the Chesed mission is that our enemies do not value life. We value life. We'll go to Allah. We'll go to the sickest kids. We'll care about their life. Our enemies wanted to kill us. We'll make a hot solo. Our enemies wanted to stop us from learning Torah. Have more Torah. So Freda, say yes. Our enemies wanted to kill us, have more babies. Come on, tell them what, Abba, what Daddy used to say. Every baby was a miracle. More, more Torah. My father-in-law established the yeshiva Beis Yaakov in Toronto. He came from a place that they destroyed every piece of Torah that he was there. The Jewish response, ladies and gentlemen, says Charlie, is light the oil. Forget about the war. Don't go and take revenge and kill more people. Put more people into this world. Put more Torah into this world. And that's our response. <laughs> and that's why we do the Shemit. All right, guys, thanks.